Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ann Emanuel. A new bill in Pennsylvania could make it easier for student drivers to earn their licenses. This could be especially helpful for areas with limited DMV services. Our Sonia Ellison has more. In the very rural Twin Tiers region, a driver's license is essential to employment and other basic access. In Pennsylvania, it's especially difficult due to the limited hours the DMV is open. Yeah, so in Tioga County, our DMV that we have is open one day a week uh, for tests. And it's on Wednesday, so if you need to take that test, you have to wait till that day. And it's really tough for folks if they want to take it on a different day, then they really got to get their parents to, or guardians to give them some extra time off to... To, to take them to Bradford County or down to Williamsport. It's, a, it's quite a commitment from those parents if they have to take them much further than Wellsboro. Pennsylvania State Representative Clint Owlett listened after a local teacher reached out to his office suggesting, Why don't you let the school districts, if they're interested, uh, allow them to be able to give the written portion of a permit test so that uh, the students don't need to go to the DMV to take that test. Right now, PA schools with driver's ed teachers can offer the driving portion of the permit test, but not the written exam. House Bill 1929 would allow students to take their permit test at their school district as the teacher proctors it, streamlining the process for beginner drivers. Once they are licensed, students will just have to pick up their license from the DMV. Thus allowing them to do that right there in the school versus going and sitting at the DMV for two or three hours in the afternoon. To take the test. Many other states like neighboring New York already do this. We're not telling school districts they have to do this. We're not mandating that, but if it's something that they feel like it's something they could do and they could offer as a service to their students, uh, we're saying PennDOT needs to create an avenue, a mechanism to make that happen. It's an excellent idea. Kids need it. That's a good, it sounds like a good plan. Owlet is hopeful this bipartisan bill that's supported and inspired locally will pass. This is a, a teacher in Kaneski Valley High School's idea, and hopefully we can get it done. Sonia Ellison, Big Fox News, Tioga County. Tops Friendly Markets announced its annual Check Out Hunger campaign is happening through February 10th. When Tops shoppers check out, they can donate two, three, or five dollars to go to the food bank of the Southern Tier. Top says the mission of Check Out Hunger is to work with the food bank to end hunger in their communities. The city of Elmira says the last day for old Christmas tree pickup is Monday, February 5th. City officials say residents must place trees on the city right-of-way, which is the area between the curb and the sidewalk. The Biden administration is touting new numbers showing growth in the economy as he tries to pick up momentum heading into the general election. Connor Hansen has the story. America now has the strongest growth, the lowest inflation rate of any major economy in the world. It's because of you. President Biden visited the key election state of Wisconsin, claiming credit for recent economic growth. A new report shows the U.S. GDP has grown by more than 3 percent compared to the fourth quarter of 2022. The administration says a strong labor market, consumer spending, and business investment all contributed. The experts from the time I got elected were insisting that a recession was just around the corner. Every month there was going to be a recession. Well, you know, uh, we've got really strong growth. Some Americans might not be feeling the boost yet. Overall, prices are still up nearly 18 percent since January 2021. While Biden toured Wisconsin, Trump was off the trail and back in court today testifying in the E. Jean Carroll defamation trial. Since New Hampshire, both Trump and his GOP rival Nikki Haley have focused their fire on each other. Former President Trump attacked Haley online, saying, quote, anybody that makes a contribution to bird brain from this moment forth will be permanently barred from the MAGA camp. Haley responded with her own post, writing, quote, well, in that case, donate here. Let's go. Trump's post came after Haley claimed she raised $1 million from small donors since her speech in New Hampshire Tuesday night. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Texas is not backing down in its fight with the Biden administration over border security. The state is still in a legal battle over its use of razor wire along the border. Meanwhile, lawmakers in Washington are still working on a new immigration policy. Rebecca Castor reports. 
And one of the strongest acts of defiance for a modern-day governor, Greg Abbott has declared the border crisis an invasion and invoked Texas's constitutional right to self-defense. The authors of the Constitution knew there would be times when the federal government would not live up to its duty. Texas has a right as a state to stop criminals from coming into our state. Losing trust in Biden's border agents, the Texas National Guard has taken over control of one area of the border popular for illegal crossings. There's also been debate about the use of razor wire to stop migrants, with the Supreme Court giving approval Monday for the Biden admin to start cutting the wire. It's not making people's lives safer. It's actually making it harder for law enforcement at the, at the border to do their job. Despite the legal blow, Abbott says Texas will hold the line, while in Washington, lawmakers continue to hash out an immigration reform package. We have the outlines of a deal. We've had it for several days. It's 90 plus percent written. But will passing it rely on approval from former President Donald Trump? As insiders suggest, some Republicans don't want to lose their top issue during election season. I don't agree on that, and the reason I don't agree on that is, one, we have a constitutional responsibility to be able to protect the country and its safety. The things that are in this bill, Donald Trump would actually want to be able to have as president on this. Right now, further emergency aid for Ukraine is contingent on new border policy being passed. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. An animal rights group suggests Punxsutawney Phil should be replaced with a gold coin. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA, reportedly sent a letter to the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club's president pleading for Phil the Groundhog to be retired to an animal sanctuary. In return, the organization says it will give the group a large gold coin to use for their ceremony instead. PETA argues that Phil deserves better than to be exploited every year for tourism and money, adding that although groundhogs are intelligent animals, they cannot predict the weather. And his predictions are just as accurate as flipping a coin. Groundhog Day is celebrated every year on February 2nd. Many people in Britain are getting salty over an American professor's advice on the perfect tea. The U.S. Embassy in London took to X, formerly Twitter, to question a Pennsylvania professor's claim that a pinch of salt makes tea taste better. The controversial opinion comes from Professor Michelle Frankel's book, Steeped, the Chemistry of Tea. The book also features other divisive topics in Britain, such as when to put milk in the tea. The embassy says tea unites the U.S. and the U.K., and it calls for both nations to be, quote, steeped in solidarity. But cheekily signed off by saying the proper way to prepare tea was in the microwave. Next, we'll have a look at your full forecast. Plus, a Senate committee heard from experts stressing the benefits and potential shortfalls of using artificial intelligence in policing. I'm Connor Hansen in New York. I've got the details coming up. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, good evening. As we stepped into our Thursday, the dreary weather was taking over. Views like this with areas of reduced visibility was seen all across the region. And we're going to continue to battle sometimes at that reduced visibility. As one, we're noting that snow melt is ongoing with some warmer temperatures. We're under a more rich environment with rain showers pushing in. And noting that we're going to stay with this environment over the next coming days with light winds and those mild temperatures. Now, we see that a fog advisory advisory is going to continue at least through tomorrow morning as we'll watch that morning low temperatures range anywhere from 36 into Watkins Glen, 38 there into Corning. So we're noting that temperatures staying uh, well above that freezing mark, which is going to limit slick roadway conditions, but still bring us times of that reduced visibility. So do continue to keep yourself wary for those early morning roadway uh, travels. Now we are noting that we're not only just dealing with fog out there, we're actually seeing rain showers as well pushing in here through the overnight. Now most of the these rain showers look to be out by the morning commute, but there are a few moderate downpours there possible with some sprinkles left in place. And then we'll note that we're going to keep that dense fog at times and those gloomier skies as we'll be tracking another round that is expected to come into our weekend forecast. So when it comes down to this round that is in place overnight with some of those moderate pockets, there may be some half inch markers, generally at least receiving a few tenths of an inch. There a quarter of an inch looking to be at least likely for everyone bumping up a few isolated areas 
areas where those moderate downpours do occur. So another good dosing of moisture, again, only adding to that damp environment out there. So we'll have most of the moderate rain showers is around through the overnight, and then the rest of our Friday is going to keep those very mild temperatures, mid-50s, continuing to melt down any of those lingering snowpacks, and then creating more times of that dense fog. So this is going to be something that will battle through at least the early weekend. Winds are going to pick up, and when there's stronger winds, that makes it more difficult for fog to develop. So that threat is going to diminish at times. But for now, with that light southeasterly push, moisture within the air, and a high 53, fog and rain is going to stay in place for our Friday. As we look at temperatures across the area, everybody well above normal by 20 degrees. We are typically this time of the year at 33 degrees. It's the end of January and we're dealing with rain and 50 degrees, but we can see that patterns will change still. We still have some winter months ahead for us, but we range with much of the area being able to just creep into those 50s. But we'll see that as we roll into the weekend, we'll start to get to interaction with some systems to the north, which is going to gradually pull temperatures back. We still stay above that freezing mark into Saturday. Saturday morning under mostly cloudy skies and then we'll head into those 40s as we head into Saturday. We won't have as much of a warm push in place, but we're still going to be pulling in systems from the south, which is going to allow for some rain showers possible Sunday, turning wintry with some cooler air from the north into Monday, and then we'll keep an eye on that gloomy pattern for next week.